And the topic that I'm going to share is about uh, the resultant of concurrent forces. Uh, this is under the subject statics of rigid bodies. Okay, so, so statics of rigid bodies. Um, first, to discuss is about a particle, and then after that, it's about rigid body. So the difference is that uh, if you analyze a body as a particle. Uh, the size and the shape is immaterial or not needed sa analysis. While for a rigid body, if you treat it as a rigid body, the size is considered sa analysis, size and shape. So this one is uh, under statics of a particle. So, it is my assumption that you already have an idea about statics of rigid bodies. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, let's define a force. A force represents the action of one body on another and is generally characterized by its point of application, the sun, magnitude, this one and its direction. Okay, so direction is the angle that the force makes with the horizontal. Normally, yeah, horizontal. Okay, now for a particle, we assume that all forces will meet at a common point. So, ang tawag is they are concurrent forces and they have the same point of application. Therefore, for concurrent forces, we do not need the point of application. We will only consider the magnitude and direction. So, let us have a review. Okay. Experimental evidence shows that two forces P and Q acting on a particle A can be replaced by a single force R which has the same effect on the particle. So it means that these forces P and Q can be replaced by a single force R having the same effect. Okay. So the advantage is must simplify and must simplify and problem. This force is called the resultant of the forces P and Q and can be obtained as shown in figure B by constructing a parallelogram using P and Q as two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. Okay, so you have two forces P and Q. The diagonal is the resultant. However, as you can see, for the parallelogram, there are two diagonals. Which one of them is the resultant? So to avoid confusion, okay, this is how you're going to draw a parallelogram. Make sure that the tails of the two forces will meet at a common point, A, like this one, and the diagonal, uh, the diagonal where the tail niya will also be at point A is the resultant. In this case, is the longer diagonal R. Ah. The diagonal that passes through A represents the resultant. This method for finding the resultant is known as the parallelogram law for the addition of two forces. This law is based on experimental evidence. Therefore, it cannot be proved or derived mathematically. Now, um, however, for board exam problems, uh, 
it is not advisable to use parallelogram method because time consuming yeah? Yeah. Oh. remember that the resultant that you will get is for two forces only yeah. so if given a system consisting of let us say five forces then you need to construct four parallelograms ba? I uh, suppose F1, F2, 3, 4, and 5. So, first parallelogram, consider F1 and F2. You draw a parallelogram. What you will get is the resultant of F1 and F2. Next, you combine that resultant 1, 2 with F3. And then you will get the resultant of 1, 2, 3. And then combine it with F4, and then after that, F5. And that will be the final resultant. Oh, so you will, you will only get the <coughs> resultant after four parallelograms that na ma construct nimo. So it's time consuming. Eh? Okay. So let's proceed to the second method. So we will not discuss or we will not solve a problem using parallelogram method. Okay. Now, how to get the resultant of concurrent forces if you have more than two forces? Consider a particle A acted by several coplanar forces. Uh, it means na several forces contained in the same plane, coplanar, same plane. Yeah. Since the forces considered here all pass through Point A, they are also said to be concurrent. Mana uh, meaning sa concurrent? All forces meet at a single point. The vectors representing the forces acting in A may be added by the polygon rule. Okay. In figure B, okay, polygon rule. So sa physics, muni uh, ang tip to tail method sa physics. Since the use of the polygon rule is equivalent to the repeated application of the parallelogram law, the vector R thus obtained represents the resultant of the given concurrent forces. That is the single force which has the same effect on the particle A as the given forces. Meaning na originally you have three forces P, Q and S, but you can replace the three forces by a single force R having the same effect. Bale, you change nimo ang system, pero in effect, wala ma change, kay same lang man. Na I change, pero as if na wala lang. Marara na siya, oh, kuan ba? You have 10. 10 ka 1 piso coin. Ba? And then, i-replace ni mo 1 nga 10 peso coin. Uh, ba? So, instead na you have 10 pieces of coins, you will only have 1 piece, uh, one coin. Pero, ang value niya, same ra. 10 ra niya, pun. Ba? Okay. As shown, the order in which the vectors P, Q, and S representing the given forces are added together is immaterial. Meaning, to solve for R, you may not start with P. You can start with S, and then you add Q, and then you add P, and you'll get the same R. Uh, as in, fig in figure B, you start with P, and then you add Q, and then you add S, and you have R. Uh, by the Q plus S plus P, Q plus P plus S, etc. Okay. So, <coughs> resolution of a force into components. We have seen that two or more forces acting on a particle may be replaced by a single force which has the same effect on the particle, what we discussed a while ago. Conversely, 
A single force, if acting on a particle, may be replaced by two or more forces which together have the same effect on the particle. Opposite ni siya. Uh, bale sa previous na slide, two forces replaced by a single force. This time, one force to be replaced by two forces. Uh, these forces are called the components of the original force F. And the process of substituting them for F is called resolving the force F into components. And as you can see in figures A, B, and C, you have the same magnitude F, but you have three sets of components, P, Q, P, Q, P. Different magnitudes and different directions. But the resultant is the same. Okay. okay. To illustrate this, uh, I have this illustration. You have this force F, no? Okay. First set of components is this one. One component along the x-axis, another on the y-axis. You form a parallelogram, but since they are per the components are perpendicular to each other, the plane figure formed is a rectangle. Okay. Next. Okay. You have two forces, same magnitude, same resultant, and then this one. Okay. Uh, different components, same resultant. And then last. Uh, four sets of components, but same resultant. Okay? Uh, okay. Here's our main point. Rectangular components of a force. In many problems, it will be found desirable to resolve into two components which are perpendicular to each other. So in the figure shown, the force F has been resolved into a component Fx along the x-axis and a component Fy along the y-axis. The parallelogram draw to obtain the two components is a rectangle. And Fx and Fy are called rectangular components. So in this case, if given ang magnitude and direction, you can solve for Fx and Fy using trigonometry. So right triangle, hypotenuse angle, Fx is the adjacent side, while Fy is the opposite side. Therefore, Fx is equal to F cosine theta, and Fy is Fy sine theta. Take note, ha? cosine theta adjusted. Ha? So, katoa. Okay. Sige. So, let us try to understand rectangular components because sometimes students get confused about the sign or sense of the components. Okay. So here's a force, 1,000 newtons acting on the second quadrant and 30 degrees from the horizontal. So you draw a rectangle and you have the components Fx and Fy. Okay. Solution one is, this is the common practice. The common practice is use the acute angle that the force F makes with the x-axis. But take into consideration the sense of the component. Sense is this one. Fx is negative since it is directed to the left. And Fy is positive since it is directed upward. <clears throat> oh. So to solve for Fx, uh, 
you put negative, since it is directed to the left. And then magnitude if cosine acute angle 30. And you have negative 866.025. And for FY, positive man, 100 sign. But I would like to suggest this. To avoid confusion, always find the angle that the force makes with the x-axis to avoid confusion. Because there are cases when the angle is referred from the y-axis. Uh, reason so that fx will always be equal to f cosine theta and that fy will always be f sine theta. Because if the angle is referred from the vertical, fy is now the adjacent side. So therefore, fy will be f cosine. Kaya adjacent man siya. So para dili ka man confused, get the angle with respect to horizontal. So that fx will always be cosine. The adjacent side ba? Ano na? Uh, that's my suggestion. It depends on you. Eh? Now, this is the second solution. The not common solution. Eh? Uh, because only a few students use this one. Eh? So, this solution is using the angle that the force F makes with the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise so the angle is referred from this one positive x-axis this one 150 by doing this automatic f cosine theta and f sine theta without considering the sign eh? so money and advantage you don't need to worry about the sense of the components. Right. So 1,000 cosine 150, and you will get negative. Fy, 500. No need to construct a rectangle. All you have to do is determine the angle that the force makes with the positive x axis. Para di na construct or rectangle. Okay. Now, in the case where the direction given is not the angle but two points on its line of action. So, given the coordinate and in a point, the origin and also the coordinates uh, tip. And from these two points, you can have its slope. Eh? So suppose the force has a slope of three vertical to four horizontal with a magnitude of 1,000 newtons. How do we get the rectangular components? Eh? So first, you get the hypotenuse. And then, let's have a comparison. Uh, so for this triangle, let's denote x, y, and d. And then this angle as our theta, 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 and theta also. And if you go back, fx equals f cos and theta. So since the angle is not given, let us make use of the slope. So cos and theta is x over d. Adjacent of hypotenuse x over d. So fx will be equal to f times x over d. And for fy, f sine theta, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse y over d. And then we will use this one, this relation, to solve for fx and fy. So for fx, it's 1000. X over D, uh, 800, FY, Y over D, uh, 600. 
Ah, okay. Now, if we have a system, how do we add for how do we get the resultant? Okay, given more than two forces. Okay. So to illustrate, uh, what you will do is this. Get the components for force A and then force B and then force C. Okay. And the resultant is the sum of A, B, and C. You add it vectorially and you will have this one. Vector A, vector B, vector C. Uh, but instead of getting the magnitude R, first we get the components of the resultant, Rx and Ry. So for Rx, we will just add all horizontal components. And for Ry, we will add all vertical components. General, any plus general. As actual, if there are forces direct to the left, you have to subtract. And force directed downward, you have to subtract also. So for short, Rx is actually the sum of all horizontal forces, horizontal components rather. And Ry is the sum of all vertical components. <laughs> So, the scalar components Rx and Ry of the resultant are several forces acting on a particle are obtained by adding algebraically. Algebraically meaning you have to consider the sign. The corresponding scalar components of the given forces. So in determining the resultant R, you apply the parallelogram law. Now. Suppose, after adding the horizontal components, it turned out that Rx is positive. It means na the horizontal component is directed to the right. And suppose, if the sum of all vertical components is positive, then Ry is directed upward. So, to solve for R, i-plot ni mo ang Rx of Ry, like that. And then you apply the parallelogram law. And since the components are perpendicular, the plane figure formed is a rectangle. And the diagonal is the resultant and the angle theta being the direction. So to solve for R, given Rx and Ry, you will use Pythagorean theorem. And to solve for theta, given Rx adjust inside and then Ry opposite side use tangent function or theta is arctan of opposite over adjacent. Okay. So we are now ready to solve a simple problem. Four forces act on a bolt A as shown. Determine the resultant of the forces on the bolt. Take note if two is referred from the vertical. Okay. okay. So our first solution is for beginners. So for beginners, what you will do is construct rectangles for its components. Uh, like that. And then construct a table. So that you will have a systematic way of solving the problem. Force, magnitude, X component, Y component. So you write F1 to F4 and then corresponding magnitude. All right. And then you start solving for the components. So for F1, X component is 150 cos 30 and this is the value. Positive, directed to the right for FY. 150 sine 30, that's positive 75. Now, in the case of F2, to avoid confusion, as I have suggested a while ago, 
get the angle that the force makes with the horizontal. And the angle is 70 degrees. Ah, okay. So, pwede na. The X component is ET equals sine 70. And then this one, negative because the component is directed to, or the force is directed to the lift. And for Y, now, for this one, since it is directed downward, the X component is zero, and the Y component is equal to the magnitude of the force. And for F4, component uh, along X, and then component along Y, this one. And then after this, you add the components algebraically. The result is Rx or simply the X component of the resultant. And also for Y, you have Ry equal to this. And then you plot this one, Ry positive, Rx positive. So first quadrant. And then you construct a rectangle, diagonal of the resultant. You see Pythagorean theorem, this is the resultant. And then for alpha, arctan. And finally, this one. Uh, <coughs> when you express the resultant, express your answer, it must contain magnitude and direction because the resultant or is a force and the force is a vector quantity. So it must contain magnitude and direction. Okay, this is for beginners. Okay. Now, for those who are not beginners or maybe familiar with the topic, uh, okay. this will be your alternate solution. So the alternate solution is using the angle that the force F mixed with the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise so that you will no longer draw rectangles and no need to worry about the sense of the components whether it's positive or negative just use the angle that the force f makes with the positive x-axis so for f1 there's no problem okay first quadrant for f2 you have 110. For F3, it's 270. For F4, you have 345. Okay. And so, one step, you have Rx, single input sa calcio, 150. Positive, tanan. Uh, plus, tanan. Walay minus. Okay. And then for Ry, Sign lang. Now, in fact, you can store this one to X and then you can store this one to Y and then just recall the values using Pythagorean theory and you have R. Okay. So, the advantage of this one is no need for you to draw rectangles just to identify the sense of the components. All you need to do is find the direction of each force referred from the positive x-axis and measured counterclockwise. Uh, alternate solution number two is using calculator technique. Uh, using the Paul and Ray command. Uh, Paul converts rectangular co coordinates to polar coordinates, while Ray converts polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. Uh, okay. okay. As shown, Anisa, for Paul, converts rectangular to polar. So meaning, given our rectangular coordinates and you are to solve polar coordinates. So given X and Y, 
you will solve for the distance from the origin to point P or simply R and the direction theta. So input ni mo, Paul, input X, comma, Y, close parenthesis, equals, and then answer. So the first value is for the distance, or the magnitude. Second value is for direction. While for the recommend, given on polar, convert it to rectangular. So given R and theta, you solve for X and Y. Okay. But you have to understand this one. Now, like for this one, rec. Okay. Now, um, for the angle theta, the first value is the adjacent side x and then y. But if the angle that you use is this angle referred from y, the first value is y. Uh, default ang x, y. Ah. Pero ang actual value nga makuha ni mo, the first value is the vertical one component. And the second value is the horizontal component. That is if the angle that you use is referred from the vertical. So you have to be careful with your values. Eh? <clears throat> Specify the angle unit before performing calculation. Uh, like, kung mo degrees ang sitting, dapat ang angle ni mo input degrees. Pero kung naka mo radians, ha, ang angle ni mo input should be in radians. Second. Okay. So let's use... A direct and power command. So step one is press shift minus. This is the display rec. And then this one. We'll use A and B instead of X and Y. So A is alpha negative sign. And then comma is shift close parenthesis comma. And then B is alpha degrees minute seconds. And then close parenthesis. And then after this is we press calc. Press calc. This, the display will be this one. First display is A question mark. The calculator is asking for the value of A. A is magnitude. Yeah? R theta. Many. So instead of R theta, we are using A and B. So A is for the magnitude. So we'll input 150 for F1. And then press equal sign. The next display is B question mark. Angle, 30. Press equal sign. This is the display. So X, the X component. And cursor right, you will have 75. Y component. So one is it, eh? Now, after this, I have a clear screen. Do not press AC. Instead, you press calc for F2. Okay? So the next step is for the other forces, just press calc and then repeat step three. So press calc, A question mark, input ET, ET equal sign. And then for B, instead of 20, you use 110. Ana, 110. Press equal sign and the display is. And the answer is this one. And then calc again. 110 for A and for B. The angle is 270. And you have this 0. And, and then the calc A, a 4, 100. And then equal sign for B, three, four, five. And then you'll have this. And then you add X and Y. Same with the previous solution. Bah. So repetitive same style. Calc, A, B, calc, A, B. And then the third one is for uh, the fastest method. The most, the easiest, the easiest method to use. Complex, so mode two complex. 
Okay, so example, 2 angle 45, the input is 2, shift negative, 4 angle sign, and 45 equals components then is uh, X and Y. Okay? So, okay. For the other forces, the angle that we are going to use should be referred from the positive X axis. So for F2, 110, F3, F4, F5. Do it so long. 150, angle 30, 80, 110. Uh, okay, this is the display. Uh, that's Rx, cursor right, that's Ry. And to get the resultant, press F2 for mode complex. This is the display. We will convert these values to polar, magnitude, and direction. So you press 3 equals, this is the display. Resultant and direction. Magnitude, magnitude, and direction. Okay. So, okay. How do we use mode complex and pole rec if what is given is not the angle but the slope? Okay. So for complex, mode 2, uh, this is your input. 100 arc tan of 3, 4. Uh, and then press equal sign and then... You have 80 plus 68. This is 80 and then 60. Arctan lang. Eh? And oh, if you use Caltech using Paul and Rick, this one, K and B, and then A question mark 100 for the angle Arctan. Arctan 3 over 4. And here is the display 80 and 60. Okay. And so, what about forces with given slope but not acting on the first quadrant? How do you use more complex solution? So, example, for a force in the first quadrant, okay lang. Dali na siya, no? so, Theta is normal. Uh, this is your input. Ba? components. For the second quadrant, ang angle ni mo is this 180 minus theta. So if you have this, make sure na ma-enclose all parentheses. Oh, 180. And then third quadrant, 180 plus theta. And you have this. And fourth quadrant, 360 minus it. Uh, okay. So that's it. I hope that you have learned something. Thank you.